Hello everyone, I'm Silver Raptor and welcome to War Game Replay Commentary video where we are playing with that Eastern Block Support deck and I will have to say I am very sad is the fact that I actually recorded this game live. It was going beautifully. I was in this game with Bolt and Bubble Box uh, on TeamSpeak. We were chatting, we were laughing, we were having fun, coordinating. It was so perfect. I was going back and forth in my camera all over, uh, doing exactly what this support tech was designed to do and helping out the teammates. And the audio just corrupted so badly. Uh, oh, it, it was heartbreaking. So I decided I'm going to go and play for you guys uh, or show you guys this in a replay commentary video. So, uh, I am joined, like I said, with Bolt Sauce and Bubble Box, who have decided to grace their presence away from Steel Division that they have been so absorbed in for all this time. Uh, in the meanwhile, I have set out my uh, two fobs. I had a third fob here a moment ago, but Killer Carl Crook, who's also a friend of ours who joined us, he uh, popped down two fobs and in a 50 minute game I did we decided we didn't need five fobs we weren't going to go through five fobs um, four fobs uh, is about right even with the constant artillery support but uh, I am going to be leaving my CV down uh, scar R3 and then over here I am going to be sending a small contingent force here I've got uh, recon truck I've got the U uh, Ural with uh, command infantry inside as well as a strop 2 and a couple prams and they're just going to go and secure hotel and then I've got uh, a TO-55 napalm uh, tank with uh, those cheap uh, uh, trucks with machine guns on top of them right here and they're all going to come up on Foxtrot here in the uh, down this forest region to basically they're going to provide cover fire support in case the enemy just tries to roll on in uh, on top of us and my Andavas are ready to uh, start artillery at the start of this game. And uh, we should be starting in just a moment here. Bubble Box is going to be going over here on the right. Bolt's going to go on the left. And Killer's going to uh, in the center. And I'm going to be in the back just supporting all three of them uh, throughout the entire game. And it got hectic pretty fast. I'll let you know having to keep track of both supply, man, and machine. But uh, anyways, let's go and get this game underway. Uh, so we're going to start off. Everyone is going to be sending their stuff uh, elsewhere, except for Killer, who is actually trying to fix his team speak at this exact moment so that he can get on the chat with us. Uh, so uh, seeing this, normally I was going to have my MI-25 and uh, MI-2RO go about here and try to help out with Bubble. But given that Killer was still doing his team speak back here, I quickly diverted them into Fedor to make sure they weren't trying to do a heli rush into Fedor. Uh, Bolt Sauce is sending all of his uh, tanks over. I believe he's playing. He looks like he's playing a Polish Finnish deck, uh, Alliance deck. So uh, he's going to go over there on the left. Bubble is playing. A Soviet Union deck and Killers playing another Soviet Union deck and we see a whole lot of helicopters right here and they are artillery here for some bizarre region did they think that we were going to be dropping uh, helicopters there not sure but uh, seeing that they are held back my MI-25 is ready to try to shoot if they tried to push forward as my uh, uh, flat MG SPW 152 E's uh, with their machine guns, get into a good fire support position onto this town, followed backed up by the napalm launcher. My on have moved away from the sector, and they're now beginning to acquire their first target. This is what they were designed and made for. And uh, we're going to have to kind of guess where all the artillery is going. I think I do know. We saw that there was some stuff going down here uh, in this forest. I saw that we have the TR transport. Uh, so I knew there were Fulschman Jaeger 90s. I told Bolt, be careful, Fulschman Jaeger 90s in there. Uh, he thanked me for the knowledge, and I'm just artillery here for, yeah, saw some vehicles. Tried to see if we can get anything uh, good at the start. So Killer, Killer is losing all of his MI-24Ds, which is not something you want to lose 
at the start, considering how expensive they are. Um, so not the best. I don't think he was actually aware we were playing Destruction. Otherwise, he wouldn't have committed such uh, so much to troop loss. So, uh, Bolt has unloaded his uh, Panzer keys and revealed that, yep, there was indeed some infantry here. It's my good uh, informing of that, as the BMP-1 is being mortared by uh, the stuff here on Gregory, and my Aunt Davos should uh, quickly acquire that, as I've been actively, throughout the whole game, trying to target their artillery, their mortars, everything. Right now, it looks like some artillery was coming down. I, I think I may have saw a Crotel here. Did I get the Crotel? Well, there's no carcass, so... I guess the Crotel survived and he moved it. So there are the mortars. They are the uh, 30 point 5 HE power mortars. And my on are quickly acquiring their location. Because I need to definitely help out uh, Bolt. On the left, one of a vehicle took a hit by some Milan 2s. Looks like it was a uh, tank. The T-72 Wilks are taking pretty bad beating and he has to full retreat them. Uh, he loses a spike squad over here on the left. Missile barely misses, so that was incredibly lucky. As the entire helicopter swarm is flying over here onto the left. On the right, Bubble is uh, slowly making his way up. He's managed to secure this tree line here. And his Brom 3 is part of the Commando Para squad as he is moving up his Nunguska. And is going to try to take control of this mountain. My ar artillery is starting to land on these mortars who are taking quite a bit of damage. They are stunned, but then they immediately start moving. But I managed to do take out one of the mortar squad, thankfully. Grotel uh, takes out a uh, recon helicopter there. And as you can see, they have doubled in terms of points to what we have uh, in kill so far. So things are not looking great for us at the moment, as we are all trying to get it to position. Uh, Killer Carl Cook has, um, or I'll just call him Killer, has the uh, town successfully secured in Fedor. And uh, I do mainly focus on the left, uh, mainly to help out uh, Bolt Sauce. Uh, I do reply to a few help from Bubble here on the right uh, throughout the game, but uh, I, as you can see, I'm just kind of taking a step back. Uh, have these prams out here in case they try to push over through Dimitri. Uh, but I bring forward this RM-70 uh, uh, rocket artillery truck because uh, uh, Bolt was trying to talk about getting uh, mortars for smoke, and I said, I can bring in my RM-70 and provide smoke for you. And he said, oh, thank you. So, BTR-50 not quite in the forest, and is being mortared uh, uh, quite heavily. Uh, Tomcat is flying around in the back, uh, back lines. So we do need to uh, be careful of our uh, airplanes. My on Davis have already acquired, and they are firing uh, uh, completely synced uh, artillery shells, and it looks like they are, I think I may have saw a Crotel there, trying to go into that spot. Doesn't actually kill anything, but um, I think one more shot, and then they're, ah, oh, yes. They're now relocating. I think Bubble found the CV right over here in Elena, and he told me about that. So here come my Antava shells, and the first two that land takes out the CV first shot, and thus neutralizing Elena of possibly allowing us to get a bit of a point to lead on them. Spike Squad opening up against the Gephard A2 and takes that out nice and handy. Seed Plane going over. Uh, see that there's something on but has to turn back so he did, because that Tomcat is quickly trying to engage. Fires those missiles but those missiles uh, don't connect at all. Well, one of them actually did connect but the SU-22 does get out on time. And my Andavas have now reacquired a new target. I'm not entirely sure where I am targeting here with these Andavas. Uh, I think that perhaps I saw another Crotel somewhere. I guess right about here. Um, yeah, I got the Crotel. Nice. Finally, Crotel hunting paid off. So my RM-70 is in position. I've got an MFRW BM-27. This is cluster munition. 
and we're going to prepare uh, to do a massive push here into Gregory on the left. Bolt is bringing forward the last of his squad that he's going to need. And then when he gives the signal, I start unleashing all the rocket artillery that I can. Uh, he is saying that there's mortars here. I remember this uh, command. There's mortars here at this attack command and this attack command. So my rocket artillery is coming into position. And misses completely wide, which basically alerts them that I'm starting to artillery that position. The farther, of course, uh, from an artillery piece, the uh, longer, um, the wider the dispersion is. And that's a Flak Panzer Gephardt A2 that I was actually artillerying. Since I knew that they had lo uh, fired wide, I had already relocated my other artillery shells to land here, wherever he wanted to uh, have destroyed. But in the meantime, we are preparing up, and my 24V is trying to take out this cannon, and succeeds in doing so. He saw something into that attack command. I think he's just saying, go, go, go. That's the, uh, yep, that is indeed the uh, key, as both my rocket uh, trucks are beginning to aim. This is firing his cluster munition. This is going to be firing smoke so he can push forward. Cluster munition is coming in at the same time that a whole bunch of helicopters are coming here on the left. But I managed to kill something into that forest. Anything that's in there, that infantry is going to be panicked. Vehicles, if they're light, are going to be taken out. And now here comes the huge smoke that is landing in, allowing all of Bolt Sauce's forces to push forward. Uh, into this other tree line. Something is uh, exploded there. Uh, looks like a uh, Fuchs uh, vehicle. Another thing opened up. Jaguar 2 is opening up against these T-72s. Misses. As T-72s do take that out, Crotel uh, manages to shoot down a plane. Not entirely sure which one that was. Uh, but uh, did manage to succeed in taking out the plane. Mortars are coming in to try to counteract his push. A Leopard 2 pushes out into the from the smoke, but gets taken out by his Wilkes in the back line. As I start bringing forward some Conqueror's M to help back him up and support, because ATGMs I noticed he was lacking. Killer brings up a T-72 BU to help him out. As my artillery is just starting to land here and basically soften up anything that is left in this small forest. And I'm bringing forward all of these little trucks. Uh, the 10 point truck, these are also going to be able to help him push forward soon, but he is kind of wasting the smoke. But the Panzergrenadiers are running out and they are being taken out. So it was actually a bit of a successful smoke due to the fact that the enemy tried to push out to make sure he wasn't pushing. And he really wasn't actually pushing to take the full advantage of it. Now there are an AT GM squad right here that is acquiring his uh, troops, but I already have artillery now targeting that position to make sure to make sure that ATGM doesn't cause any more damage as I say that a Wilk is taken out and the artillery gets close to the Milan 2 squad it stuns them as the VMF squad is moving forward to be able to provide line of sight a couple more artillery coming in and it didn't actually take out the Milan 2 squad bit surprised there uh, T-72PU has acquired with its missile against whatever that is misses and I finally take out the Milan 2 squad excellent so now his vehicles can start moving forward unmolested my on Davis are have been constantly showing as you can see they are starting to run a little low on uh, artillery shells my BM 27 has fully reloaded in the meantime over on the right bubble is continuing to fire back he for some reason got Strelas 3s which is quite interesting as the Tuguska and the Strelas C's are able to take out the Pumas that are coming uh, across over here on the mountain and they fire at the Puma over here and to successfully take it down so interesting st strategy using Strelos 3s. Uh, back on the left the uh, skirmish continues. Leopard 2s have taken quite a bit of beating and one does go down to the T-72 Wilk of Bolt Sauce and uh, Stalemate has begun. Bolt Sauce is low on supply. Uh, in the meanwhile my uh, convoy of tree cheap trucks is coming forward and these are going to basically test the waters to make sure if there's anything uh, still uh, in these forests here. Another plane goes down. Uh, not entirely sure. Looks like it was a seed plane that did go down to whatever uh, whatever was uh, AA was in the area. 
My on top of the targeting this Roland 3, which tries to move out of the way, but gets taken out, thankfully. So that is one huge AA piece that we don't have to worry about anymore. The ITP VSV marksman is taking out the uh, anti-tank uh, helicopter that had revealed itself as my trucks are now starting to get into position and they're basically out here and said hey shoot at me let me know if you are there Wilk and Leopard 2 are now going toe to toe but the Wilk is on 2 HP but that BMP1 hits with an optics failure forcing them to be pushed back as my trucks are now also beginning to open up with their machine guns against this Fuchs basically telling this Fuchs no you can't repair yourself we won't let you couple of tanks we're pushing forward here onto this right side. I'm sending forward another smoke rocket from my RM-70 as my napalm tank is getting close to getting into range. These flaks are taking uh, uh, these Book Milan hits and uh, basically protecting this T-72BU as that will be prioritized over that. T-72BU is able to survive those uh, rockets quite well and it's now beginning to counterattack with its main gun. Another missile come and hits it in the front, but it's still able to survive such an encounter. My F uh, LAMG is uh, helping to shoot down jet these hooks as its machine gun does actually surprisingly have one AP power, so it can take out some APC. It's my Conquer M get into position, take out the Leopard 2 on the left, and are now going to be able to provide a nice screening uh, fire for uh, Bolt to be able to continue his push forward. My napalm tank is going to be moving up as I also move the OT 62B. So we're, I am suspecting that they're quite low on infantry here, but these Leopard 185s are starting to get into position, and that is going to be the biggest danger for us all. My napalm uh, tank is going to try to get up into this forest, but takes one uh, hit in the front by the Leopard 185, and then another shot does take that out, and that is tragic and unfortunate. Weasel Toe 2, they're going up against these OT-62Bs. At that range, they are conceivably impossible of missing. My OT-62Bs try to fire with a recordless rifle, but do indeed miss, and does get taken out. Now, I did turn off my Conqueror's M, so they don't quite uh, spot whatever it is. Raven comes over to see uh, if there's any seed, but we actually didn't have any, or at least Boltzoff turned off his seed. As my Conqueror's M, each fire one shot beautifully simultaneously against these two weasels and take them both out, one after the other. So excellent job, Conquerors. Uh, I bring forward an MI-6 for basically a backwards line of supply. So when his cargoes are finished repairing all of his troops, he can move back and repair it, uh, resupply him at the MI-6. I'm also bringing up a Colos to help with the supply of his troops in the center. Not a whole lot has happened in the middle. We are kind of dug in for that. Tomcat is still circling behind, ready to intercept any hell, uh, plane that might be coming forward. And then I bring a Colos over here on the right to help uh, Bubble out as he is starting to run low on supply as well. Now these guys do have supply trucks on their own, but being a support deck and having excess amount of supply, it feel obligated to help out your teammates, make sure they have all the supplies they need to keep their push forward, since you don't really have any other better thing to do than to artillery everything all over the place. Uh, artillery is coming in. Looks like I'm trying to go for another... Oh, a Crotel. Managed to get another control, Crotel successfully. So I've basically been hunting down all the Crotels as they would be wreck any kind of vehicle that we might... or helicopters we might have. Panziarchy are starting to open up against these vehicles. They're, co they're actually providing cover so that these Panziarchy can actually get into the forest. Uh, these Rash... Rash... Kashin... Kai... Koryama... Uh, with their recoilless rifles, are going to be able to take out whatever vehicle that is, but not before a helicopter is successfully taken out. Looks like an MI-24. Uh, Panzerarchy 90s are engaging commando marines, but the sheer fact that they outnumber them and the fact that they are shocked, they are going to be uh, tearing them apart, as well as my RM-70 does a danger close HE power shot right here, basically stunning up and damaging their infantry. My Conqueror's M have managed to Force this Leopard 2A4 back on one health, but not enough to kill it. That it was a major bummer. As my Colos has arrived, it is uh, resupplying the Nonias and the T-80A. Tunguska is moving back for a resupply quickly at the Colos, but the Colos is going through fuel incredibly fast. Hopefully that Tunguska will stop before it uses up any last of its uh, supply. Oh, now he's going to be moving it forward to try to engage whatever that was. So that Colos is just going to be supplying whatever those donuts have. 
as he pushes over onto the right is the Rima. In the left, our push is continuing forward. A rocket barrage hits this uh, forest, but it was AG and all of these vehicles were able to withstand it just fine. The MI6 moves up a bit closer to help uh, share the supply as my Colos goes back for a refill. My BM-27 is in position, ready to cluster whenever it needs to, and my RM-70 is indeed ready. And I was actually wrong with these trucks. I thought that they fired 40 rockets a time, they actually fire about 20. So it's just very handy, which means you can fire these guys four times without going back for a resupply. Pretty useful. Anti-RQ-90s are going to be taken up by these Fulcrum Jaegers and Commando Marines. T-72BU is moving up. That is very dangerous. He needs to turn to make sure that that front armor engages with those Fulcrum Jaegers. Cross fine. And it does turn around just in time as the BMP-1s also provide, and the BMP-2 also provides their fire support into taking out this infantry. The T-72BU does get on the side of the napalm, basically shutting out the infantry from being able to see it. But it takes a front hit from whatever uh, uh, ATGM hit it, and it's now forced to reverse back up and does successfully take it in the front. And now it's time for me to actually help provide with some actual muscle. I bring forward some moth shoots in 90s, and they are starting to come forward to help out uh, Bolt and Killer as they push forward. The ATGM that are coming forward from the village does take out one of my. Uh, trucks with their infantry inside. I did get this one existing in the forest, so I just kept an eye out for that rocket. The moment I saw those rockets coming, instantly unload those infantry so that not another squad is killed. One of the trucks is dead, but the muff shoots are alive. That was about the important thing. And as you can see, Killer Carl is moving to VDB-90 to hunt out the last remnants of resistance here. As uh, Attackum's missile comes in and takes out all of my five-point trucks of deaths which was one. Another missile comes in, and that's actually a bit of a fault on their part. You don't need two missiles to land in the same spot. Moth shoots in 90 are going to make over into this forest to be able to provide a buffer area as all the mods and the T-72s get into position into this forest line here. Basically able to, uh, in case the enemy tries to push forward, they'll be able to push them back. Leopard 185 takes a beautiful hit from the BU. It's down on one health. BU quickly tries to reload, fires, and successfully takes that out. And uh, we are still behind 500 points at this point. So we do need to be a little bit more careful and figure out how to take uh, more kills and more territory. Hot 2 does hit the mod, but the mod has enough armor to survive. Over on the right, Bubble is continuing his push forward. My Colos has moved. Uh, over to the right, and uh, his tanks instantly take advantage of the delicious supply. They quickly try to reload their turrets. Tiger had fired at the Scrizette, taking that out, but the Scrizette does successfully stun the Had, but the Had is going to be able to fly away successfully. Seeing that this uh, sector has been neutralized for so long, I bring forward a Ural, carrying those uh, infantry uh, East German squad be able to capture Elena so that we can get more points and be able to get an even bigger advantage. BMD2 is trying to target whatever was in that forest line, but did just miss. Does take a hit, so that is indeed a tank. Conquers, fires, missile fires, as both missiles, uh, well, one missile misses, but one hits, taking four hit points down, but the BMD2 is going to go down. T-72BU fires, does actually manage to hit with that missile. That's impressive. A Raven comes forward, manages to take out one of the marksmen, or manages to hit the marksman before having to retreat. As I, since there was a vehicle here, I begin to cluster this, make sure they're not having any nasty surprises coming in. As I also smoke it out, and I take out a hundred points, tank, it seems. That was perfectly uh, hit. Uh, Fuchs is over there, so we know that they have some ATGMs into this forest area. Those BMP-1s are being taken out, and we are just trying to push into center. That's going to be incredibly difficult to do. Bubble Box is uh, starting to mark uh, flares on where he saw artillery coming forward. They probably would have moved it since then. I don't think I actually hit any of the artillery for uh, most of the game as they kept moving after immediately after they fired. But, uh, yeah. The rest of 
the game, the teammates start uh, keeping an eye out for any artillery for me to counter already. TADA is moving forward, trying to go to take out that Crotel. Longbow is coming uh, forward to take out the TADA. Uh, interesting enough, my command squad isn't actually in the sector. If you look on to the left, but if you look down here, it kind of looks like they are in this, this zone. So they do need to move up a bit more. And our push continues by Machu 90. They're trying to get into the forest so that they be able to use their 24 AP power uh, RPGs to take them out. They're firing their machine gun as they do encounter some infantry. But the T-72S is going to help provide with their fire support. My HE rockets do successfully take out with that, uh, any Milan uh, squad that was here taking out our tanks. As the Jaegers are going to hold back my Mach Schutzen. And my Mach Schutzen aren't going to have a prayer left to stand on. As they are all taken out. Conquerors M do move up. They'll be able to provide their missiles in the closer range uh, and able to take out any tanks that do come forward. Tomcat is out trying to shoot at the plane. I had my CRS-30 ready to take out with uh, any heavy tank, but seeing all this air power, I decided better of it. Raven comes forward, doesn't get uh, find any radar, and does uh, get a few uh, missile uh, shots for its trouble and does go down. So that is one seat plane that we do not have to worry about anymore. Beautiful interception by Boltzos. My Strop 2 is trying to see if he can get engaged with Raphael, but the Raphael is too far back to really do anything. But in the meantime, since these Jaegers are all stacked up, not moving, they're making ideal target practice for my Ondava. As you can see, more and more artillery shells are coming forward. MI6 is coming in to resupply my RM70 and MFRW. On Davos have been doing a really good job. They've already gone back for a resupply and now have removed back into this position. I want to keep them far away from the sector so it's harder to guess where they actually might be. Bubble is doing a push over on the right and it's succeeding quite well. BTR 80A, they're firing their reflex missiles at this Bradley and their main gun. Gru is spotting out what is all here as I have three colos here ready for him to resupply on a, a moment's notice. Sierra 30 was coming in to take the Leopard 2A5, just manages to lose sight, and so I'm forced to evac it. As a Raphael does come in, my Sierra 30 is taken out, unfortunately. Uh, does take a couple shots at my MiG-29, but MiG-29 does get out. And then the Leopard 2A5 decides to reshow itself by not moving at all. I really hate when that happens, that you just manage to lose line of sight just that little bit. Killer is now bringing forward his own uh, HE rockets and with these grads is landing all of these rockets down onto this forest basically trying to soften up and see if he can kill any infantry that might be still left alive. I pity the fool who tries to live in a forest there. Moving forward my recon and helicopter I'm going to see if there's anything that might be coming forward. Seeing that there is none I just leave them there for the time being. As Bubble is success, still successfully pushing forward, there's an ATGM going for, I think it was going for the buck, but did manage to fail. In the center, I tried to move forward as Bolt said, let's go try to take this town. But with his ATGM taking out my napalm tank, my machine gun trucks instantly disperse, managing to make that missile indeed miss them. As they retake up their position in the forest for covering fire and wait for further instructions. Now here's another flare from Boltzoth marking that there's another rocket artillery coming in. My Andavas will quickly try to reacquire that target and do the job they're meant to do in counter RD, this annoying rocket artillery. Fortunately, this rocket artillery isn't hitting where any of our troops actually are. So that is still good news for us. Artillery is in the air. I'm not sure if they actually get this artillery or whatever rocket uh, artillery that was. More rocket artillery coming from Anna as the first of the shells are going to begin landing. And one bits is completely off course and one just a little bit short. We'll come back to see if that actually kills anything. As more rocket artillery land but surprisingly doesn't actually hit where my rocket artillery itself is. And doesn't seem, it looks like they've already moved their rocket artillery, so 
don't unfortunately don't be able to get anything. My CV has moved forward and now sits just barely in the sector zone. That is something you need to look about for this game. My Colos move up to be able to have better supply all of his troops as his Nonias are now going to begin to pepper this right side. Now this is the danger as you saw with uh, as you can see there's a lot of artillery and rocket artillery coming in from the enemy side. This is the danger of playing the support deck that if you play support the enemy brings in all of their artillery and you just kind of suffer an artillery war but as long as you're prepared for that and know that that is a very big like uh, likelihood to happen you should be able to account for it and counter already there already and engage this uh, long range duel so to say. Grads are beginning to are reacquiring their aim but are going to take a little while to fully reload. Ondava is going to go back to the FOB and we are all just basically re uh, reaffirming our hold and gearing up our troops. Something's coming down. Looks like it's a Milan vehicle. Uh, screw that. Spence that. Have to move over to the side. We're basically going to try to probe against this forest. Tunguska M does move back as the known is going to try to acquire that Milan. Scrozette does a few pot shots at it, but the T-80A with reflex missile aiming straight for that Milan and it hits it squarely in the first shot and takes that out, which is pretty darn impressive. Uh, another defense marker from Bolt. I think he's basically, yeah, he's basically saying between defense and defense, he wants to have a wall of smoke. So my RM-70s are going to be get smoking off near the town and his mortars are then going to create the line between the town and the other defense marker so that he can begin pushing forward. We're going to try to take this town, choke them off of uh, line of sight and whatever they may have. And then after this town, we then can have a better advantage uh, position of taking out the center. So in comes my rocket uh, coming in with the smoke. Excellent done. And you're probably wondering, why do I have my RM-70s so close? Uh, or my cluster munitions so close? Uh, right here. You don't really need to have them so close. They could probably both fire all the way back from Ivan. Well, the reason is the closer these are to where they're going to be rocket artillery, the smaller the dispersion, so you actually get more maximum effect per square yard uh, or per yardage in those areas uh, or meters if you're on the metric system than you would at very far away where there would be entire huge pockets where nothing would ever be hit ever. Uh, artillery's coming in. I think this is also providing additional smoke. Yep. And his line is being created. Killer Carl Cook is now rocket artillery. This is going to weaken this up as we are going to begin our push. And we are starting our push now. All these Panzerarchies, 90, are pushing forward. They are well equipped, ready to engage the enemy in close combat. They just need to run the Marathon, uh, three miler to get to the town and then begin fighting. So, uh, have fun, guys. Uh, but at the exact moment that we're doing our push, a huge reinforcement spree is coming forward, as well as this huge rocket barrage is going to come onto Boltos's Panziarchy. And oh, it is disgusting. All of his infantry uh, getting hit. Imagine trying to run uh, a major marathon under uh, rocket artillery fire. It is not fun. My mortars are instantly starting to fire against these uh, mortars back here to help try to lessen the load. And I bring forward some more artillery pieces. So now we've got four artillery pieces ready to continue delivering the payload. These are different from Andava's. They are slower, but more armored. And uh, while the dispersion is wider, they always fire in about three rounds per uh, fire position. So you can uh, more easily shoot and scoot back and forth and around and these are less likely to be hit by artillery the on dog is kind of need to keep an eye on because they fire like eight to ten rounds a piece before they stop firing on their own so the Fuchs Milans are successfully getting into the town as the Panziarchies are still doing their suicidal plunge forward as killer is moving forward he's going to stroke e 90s as well mi 24 ds are going to try to provide rocket artillery uh, support as the rocket pods are kind of uh, going widespread. And uh, looks like I lost all of my 10 point trucks. Now, here's the Raphael and the Super Etendard. Boltox brings forward his uh, MiG, and I bring up my MiG, and we're going to try to take out that Raphael, our first target. One more missile coming in. 
and I successfully get the Raphael quickly turned to engage. Does get hit in the back, is stunned. Uh, but is flying back to our line, is going to succeed and get far enough in our line that it's going to E back out for repairs. Lots of Boschman Jaeger 90s are going to try to hold off all of this squad. Now, Corner Trophy 90s aren't the best at engaging in infantry. And even the Flagler Faust is providing its support, but it's shooting down these Mi 24Ds. Mi 24Ds are trying to engage onto those AMXs, but are unable to successfully hit. And despite all the fire support, the reinforcement was just enough to be able to hold us off from this town. As the Crotel is now firing its Mi 24D, and with all the AA, this Mi 24D is not long for this world, unfortunately. T-72S is being hit by ATGM fire and also taken out and the enemy is now squarely about uh, a thousand points in the lead uh, from that failed push and so we need to really consolidate our forces. My RM-70 is fully reloaded and it's going to launch its HE rounds in a much smaller cluster uh, or dispersion as he is relatively close doing quite a bit of damage to any Fox Gear 90s that were left in the town and artillery is also uh, landing where they once were. Uh, Bolt Sauce evacs his uh, F-18C as uh, again we're simmering down. Bubble has been pushed back a bit. The enemy has been making a nice stride forward and there are four Leclercs coming down that forest area. Now I'm moving my MI-24P back because he did also see a Crotel. Strela C is acquiring the Puma 330H but hasn't able to hit first but at this close range they are going to be able to hit. One missile does hit backed up by the BRDM-3. Another Strela 3 is uh, helping out and the Puma does go down but we do lose a Strela squad in the process. I'm moving my CV squad up onto the mountain so the Leclercs don't have a straight line of sight to be able to take it out. The real danger is that Crotel needs to be destroyed before we can do anything. Bubble bring forward his MiG 27Ks, which come forward with their anti tank missiles of 38 P power. And they all fire their missiles, and only one actually connect. So only one Leclerc is taken out. Fortunately, both MiGs do also get it out. The T ADA is baiting these Leclercs to charge forward with its reflex missile opening up right into his other T-80As. As those missiles, one of those missiles hits, two of those missiles hit, the clerk is down at a half health as the Furatino lands. I manages to start stunning up the Leclerc and the Crotel. More T-80A missiles are coming in and keep hitting the Leclercs in the front. My helicopter is going to be, is trying to force itself to move forward so that it can take out that Leclerc. More missiles are engaging the Leclercs as the Furatino is starting to again reacquired and is dropping napalm right on top of the clerk stunning them up and allowing for my mi-24p to fire its cocon missiles into these clerks and hopefully be able to take them out one more missile hits that's one more clerk down and finally the fourth clerk is taken out by bubble boxes mi-24p so as you can see i am on all the entire map uh sparsely populated and completely supporting of my allies' main push, but I did succeed in bubble in holding off a four Leclerc push with a Crotel backup. Uh, Bolt Doss is continuing with his mortar fire. Uh, as we did manage to kill her actually through all of his VDV and did actually manage to successfully get into the town, so we need to quickly start backing that up. Bolt Doss is bringing forward his BMP2, says Killer Carl, or Killer is bringing forward his M. BMD 2s. RMX 10 RC uh, SBs are coming forward, and my CV is lost as the enemy was just artillery where his forces were, and one stray artillery shot actually managed to take out my entire CV. That was actually very unfortunate. But the BRDM and the BMPT is going to clear up the last of the infantry as Bubble able to re secure this location. But at this point, I want to save all of my points with only 13 points left. I we don't need another CV, we need to have results, and that is to kill and push out the enemy. Now I'm going to bring forward some more Machutes and 90s to help out securing these positions. Machutes and 90s being a very valuable infantry source, as uh, Bolt is unloaded his Panzer in case there is an ATGM, and is now beginning to move forward 
uh, on foot. T-80U from Killer Carl Cook is going to take into up a fire support position in case any infantry do open up. Commando Marines are going to engage against the VDV. The VDV are shaken, uh, weakened. So I bring forward my Napalm Bomber. The VDV 90s are not going to last much longer, and so I drop my Napalm, which takes out the successful truck and coats the uh, Commando Marines in uh, a source of fire. So that's going to uh, distract them from quite a bit. Jaegers uh, are successfully pushing out Bolt and uh, Killer on the left. But being in a solid, uh, solitary position, my artillery is going to begin opening up on them shortly. But the Squizette is also be able to use its power of double machine guns and do quite a bit of damage, but they unfortunately do get take out. Make 27Ks, take out a Leopard 2 and a Leopard 2A5. So that was definitely a worthwhile uh, kill on his part. MiG-29, 913, we're going for that F-15D Eagle, can we get that D Eagle? D Eagle does indeed get out, but my MiG-29 engages on the Nighthawk, and the Nighthawk does no ECM, does go down immediately. MiG-29 quickly turns to engage that uh, KWS, first missile goes forward, and was to back up by the F-18C, the MiG-29 does succeed in taking that down. So, team work together with our Air Force completely unified. Rocket artillery is coming in as there's a huge clump of infantry right there. Uh, Killer is doing another rocket artillery barrage on this force that they have managed to uh, wipe out the last of the forces that we have here. A Raz Vestica is taking a force into position into this town. TADU is now barricading any more reinforcements than this far out. Enemy is going to continue his push forward. BMPs are going to open up like mad. All the ATGMs are engaging these BMP2s. Unfortunately, these are empty, so it's not the biggest loss that we uh, lost them to ATGM fire. The rain of rockets keeps coming. Those storm clouds keep uh, coming uh, every so often. Always predictable, yet unpredictable at the same time, and bringing nothing but death and destruction. But uh, we, the game is now getting close to its uh, end stages. We are 1,000 points behind the enemy, as it is an 8,000 point limit. My artillery is successfully taking out whatever infantry stack was there. My Conqueror's M take out whatever uh, vehicle was harassing. And now, with these Conqueror's M squad, I'm thinking we can now begin our push forward. More HE rockets are landing, but these vehicles can survive that just fine. Jaguar A is coming forward, shoots an anti-radar missile at what, I don't know, but our entire Air Force quickly descends uh, in a coordinated strike and takes it out. My March shoots and 90s are going to begin pushing forward, and we still want to take this town, because if we could take this town, we would be in a much better position for it. Uh, Tomcats are circling around in the back. That is something to be wary of as I bring forward more Colos and the MI6 for supply for Bubble, so he doesn't have to worry about it. Uh, looks like artillery is uh, uh, right there, so they told me that, and instantly my artillery pieces are going to aim at the target direction and start bringing lead rain on top of that, a new form of weather. MiG-29S is going to drop its 5 HE power bomb as my watch shoots in 90s are going to begin opening up. BMD-2 is going to take out this Puma as Killer is going to back me up with his BDV. My Machines are going to run forward and try to get into this town so that they can actually get covered. Delta Force reveals themselves to my machine gun fire and the BMD-2. Not the best thing. Bolt takes the gamble, drops a napalm bomber with almost no ECM. In fact, no ECM. And find out they don't actually have any AA in here. So that gives us a cue that they are starting to break in terms of the anti-air department as my Machines 92 successfully get into the town. BDV-90 are hit by the infantry, unfortunately, at the same time that the rocket barrage is coming in, but my Machutes in 90 do manage to catch the Commando Marines force out of the burning buildings. Over on the left, they are also pushing forward with some Panzer Grenadiers still left in the forest, but uh, I managed to take out the Commando Marines with the Machutes in 90s. As my 5-point truck deaths are taken out, and we're just sort of holding back, holding back, Machutes in 90s do get into this town. It, half of it is still burning, but there's enough free spaces that the Machutes are able to stay in just fine. 
Uh, Fuchs is taken out by the Conqueror's M, who is now uh, basically barricading this spot with uh, long range missiles of death. Milan is forced out of the napalm. And as we are, seems to be successfully taking this town. Bubble Box is also pushing forward. He's up against some Delta Force and some AMX 40s. And this is coming down to the wire here. Uh, we've got only a 500 point difference. Uh, as uh, uh, basically more uh, planes are coming in. Tomcats in the back line. They are, I wonder what they're shooting at. Oh, a MiG 27K by Bubble Box. He loses sight of whatever vehicle that he is and is going to be be lucky enough to survive all of these missiles from Tomcats and uh, does manage to get out which was lucky. Uh, Raphael comes in, is going after this MiG 29S. It went Winchester, but and it does successfully get out. So we're getting really lucky with these planes. With this close uh, game, any planes we lose is going to be very dangerous indeed as we have managed to bring a neutral uh, basically get the equivalent amount of points. We're only 200 points behind, but there's only a 400 point that the enemy needs to, to, to actually succeed. As I did manage to capture a Mad Caddy 6 uh, by 6 squad with these Molchutsen. Now here comes the massive helicopter push. The T-88s are going to be forced back into a full retreat. They are 100 points each. Uh, vehicle does get taken out. We're only, there are only one, 80 points left for them to win as they are pushing forward with this huge helicopter push. It's going to come down to the wire if we can actually succeed. And these are super copers, meaning that they are uh, seed aircraft. So this buck has its radar turned off, but uh, if, if it can take it out, it's vain to be seen. Super copers are firing their tow two missiles at the Ural. Buck is in full retreat, but he turns on his missiles. Last second, super copers just need to get their sidebar missiles aimed, but they get taken out as the other plane gets taken out by Bolt Sauce's planes and basically bringing those points up to 7,960. At the same time, I am artillerying this center, trying to see if there's anything left into this forest that I can kill as the artillery land takes out the last 40 points we need as we secure a clutch 8,000 point victory to 7,925 points that the enemy had. It came down to 75 points, whether or not who was going to actually be able to claim victory in that game as the game decides it's too close, we're going to call it a draw. So that was a hectic game. Uh, you could look at the kill count. My Andalas just constantly firing, took out quite a bit of stuff that was uh, surviving. My BM-27 doesn't kill anything heavy, but does take out a number of vehicles. Uh, my machine gun truck to actually take out some folks, basically earning the positive trade. And my Conqueror's M did an excellent job uh, zoning out any of the tanks. Uh, as, as you can see, just everything was just a little more sparse, which is to be expected. And as you can see, not a whole lot of kills in terms of infant or, or diversity. But I still got 2,000 points, basically a 2 to 1 kill ratio to the fact that not a lot of my troops were on the front line. And I was just basically all fire support. So... No guts, no glory, but uh, still managed to help out the fire support here. Bolt Sauce even went positive, even though he doesn't play Destruction too often. Bubble went positive. Killer, I think he was in a Conquest mindset, did lose quite a bit, was trying to get territorial gain, but not keeping track of his losses. But still, overall, very good game, very close. And it reminded me again just how much I actually love my eastern block support deck i do hope you all enjoyed this hectic game going back and forth i really wish i could have uh got that life play out for you but I, this is the next best thing uh thank you all so much for watching please do like comment and subscribe down below and let me know if there's any nation decks you want me to try working on in the future so thank you so much and i'll catch you all in the next video